Finishing seams can make or break a garment because if your seams are not finished on the inside, your garment fabric can unravel, which can ruin your garment. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to finish your seams without using a serger because many of you don't have a serger. But as you can see, a serger gives a really nice, pretty finish. But no fears, I'm going to show you how to do it without a serger. Coming up next on Sewing with Nyler. Now many of us know that finishing a seam with a serger is the best way to finish off a garment professionally. But most of us don't have a serger. I have one, but most of you don't have one. So I'm going to show you how to finish off your seams without a serger. I have put red thread on my sewing machine so that you'll be able to see the stitches a little more clearer. Our first stitch is the good old zigzag stitch. Now here's your garment. It's already pressed. The seams are flat. You can do this before you press the seams, but what you're going to do is just take one part of the seam, place it under your sewing machine, and there's one of two ways you can do it. The first way is you can zigzag on the raw edge and that's what I'm going to do now. And by zigzagging on the raw edge, this is what you get. Of course, you got all these threads that are coming off. You just kind of clip those off. If you don't want to do the clipping, now we're going to do it a little differently. This time, rather than sewing on the edge, I'm going to sew just inside the fabric. And then we're going to go back and cut that off. So here's a zigzag stitch that's not overlapped. And you want to pull all these threads out to get them out of the way. And then you're going to take your scissors and you're just going to cut close to that edge without cutting the thread. So now you have a finished zigzag stitch. So you can either do an over the edge, which I personally like, or you can do a stitch inside and then trim the edges off. Number two is going to be a French seam. But with a French seam, you sew it just the opposite. You want to put right sides on the outside. So you will put wrong sides together. And you're going to sew a very, very skinny, skinny, skinny stitch as close as you can get to the edge. So I'm going to go, go ahead and do that now. Once that stitch has been done, you're going to take it and you're going to turn it on the inside. After turning it on the inside, I like to finger press it down. You could go to the iron and do this, but I'm just going to finger press it down. And then you want to fold this over. Now I'm going to do a half an inch, which will bring me back to my um, 5 eighths. So I'm going to take it now, and I've got that seam on the inside. So now I'm going to sew a half an inch seam allowance. So by sewing the half an inch seam allowance, what we did is we encased the seam on the inside. So you don't see the unraveled edges. And when you flip it on the outside, you don't see any edges on the outside either. So after pressing it, as you can see, you got a nice pretty seam on the inside. And it's very pretty on the outside. Very easy. This is a French seam. Our number three finishing stitch is called a turning stitch. Very simple. I really like this one. I've already pressed the seams flat. So I'm just going to take it and open it up. And at the sewing machine, what you're going to do is you're going to just turn in a little simple stitch just like that on both sides. And you're going to sew it. So now that I've stitched both sides, I want you to see what this looks like. And as you see, now you have a finished seam. There are no unraveled edges. The, the edges are tucked inside so they'll be pressed down and they won't unravel. Cool, right? Number four. This time we're going to do a sewing machine overcast stitch. Now, I don't know if your machine is going to have it, but this is what it looks like.
And to do that stitch, I've turned my dowel over to the overcast stitch. And you're going to sew close to the edge. You want the needle to bounce off the edge, kind of like a zigzag, and on. So it's going to seal the stitch. So let's go ahead and do that one now. So here is our overcast stitch. As you can see, it almost looks like a zigzag, but it's actually better because it zigzags onto the fabric, but then it does a top stitch or a stitch that kind of seals in the top, and it, this is what it looks like on the other side. So when you hold it out, now you stop your fabric from unraveling. Number five. Our last and final seam binding tip is using seam binding and this is a double fold seam binding when I say double fold that means you can pull it out on both sides and you've got folds in there and when you fold them back they wrap around the seam and seal it in so I'm going to do that on this particular sample and you're just gonna take it now if you look inside your um, your seam binding most of the time one side of the seam binding is wider than the other side the side that's wider that's the side that you'll put underneath and that way you know you've caught the stitch and then the side that's smaller goes on top now mind you this is a wide seam binding but you can get the small narrow ones you're going to take your seam binding you're going to lay it on the the wider side overlapping it with the smaller side and you're just going to top stitch along the edge so now there is your seam binding like I said I used a really wide seam binding this one is like a half an inch but you can use a quarter inch you can use a 3 8 inch but you see that it encloses the seam you can even make your own seam binding you can check out my video on how to make seam binding and that way your seam binding will match your fabric on the outside and it will look really cool with it being the same print on the inside so let's recap here is a serger you don't have a serger don't worry you can do a zigzag stitch to finish off your seam you can do a French seam to finish off your seam. You can do a sew and tuck where you stitch the fabric, tuck it underneath, and then top stitch it. You can do a sewing machine overcast, which locks the stitches in also. Or you can do a seam binding, a smaller one of course, smaller than what I have. And all of these will finish off your seam. The one seam finishing that I don't have can be found on my samples of fabric. As you can see, the samples have a little rigid edge up here. They have little peaks. This is made with a pinked shear. I will leave a link in the bottom of the description to show you where you can find a pair of pink and shears. But that's another way that you can finish off your seams. I hope this tip has been helpful on how to finish your seams without a serger. You gotta try it. Happy sewing.